Hi everyone. I'm sorry for the late start. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, we were just waiting for a few more attendees. Um, I think we're ready to, to get on with this now. Um, so my name is Catherine and I am one of the Assistant International Student Advisors at Cardiff Met. I'm here with my colleagues um, Katie and Simon who will be helping answer your questions. Um, so before we start, um, just so if you look at the top of your screen, there should be two speech bubbles with a question mark in it. And that's where you can um, write your questions. So I'm hoping we'll have time to answer some of your questions at the end. If we haven't got time, we'll read them and um, we will answer them in an email that we'll send you at the end of the week. We will be sending an email to everybody at the end of the week with a lot of information in it anyway. So we'll try and make sure we include anything that we haven't been able to answer today. Um, there is there are a further couple of webinars this week, so things to do with fees and money, banking, that kind of thing. We will answer briefly in this in this webinar, but we'll go into more detail later in the week. So join us for that one. My colleague um, Nick is doing a webinar on accommodation tomorrow, so anything accommodation wise, best to wait to speak to Nick um, tomorrow and listen to Nick tomorrow. Um, and we'll also cover. Um, Oh, sorry, my computer's just frozen. We'll also cover um, things like council tax and um, anything to do with um, uh, national assurance, banking, anything that is, is slightly money related in the money matters one. OK, but I will cover it slightly today. But if you've got questions on them, we might not be able to answer them today. Um, I won't be answering questions as they pop up, but my colleagues might be responding to you on there. Um, and then at the end, anything that uh, they think that it would be useful for you all to hear, I will answer um, as uh, at the end, if we've got time at the end. OK, right. So let's um, start. So hopefully you'll be able to see PowerPoint. Now. Oh, come on. Katie and Simon, can you see that? Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, I can okay. see it. Okay, all right. Right, so hopefully you can all see it. If Katie and Simon can see it, hopefully you can all see it. Um, if not, write in the in the question and answer, and uh, Katie and Simon will shout. Okay, so um, as I say, it's, it's I'm Uncle Catherine or Cat. Simon and Katie are also here with us today, um, and we are part of the Global Student Advisory Service. Um, we are split, the, the, the service is split into um, four subsections. So we are part of the general welfare advice team. We're here to offer support and guidance for any personal matters relating to living and studying here in the UK. So any issues you have as an international student, your first port of call would be to come to us um, at the welfare team, okay? We also have a team of um, dedicated ac academic advice um, members and they offer seminars, individual appointments and um, help for international students studying at Cardiff Met. So they help students with things that are more academic, but that the school doesn't cover with. So if you've got problems, for example, um, with how to reference or if you're not sure why you're not getting very, very good marks, you want help with essay structures, um, how to study better, um, critical thinking, that kind of thing they are here to help you with that. So you can contact them directly or, or ask us if you want to get in touch with our academic advice team um, and they will, will book either a, a seminar for you or a one-to-one -one appointment. Our immigration advice team is also here. So we, we offer advice on um, extending your visas, uh, visa options, um, general advice on non-tier four visas. We can't advise in detail on non-tier four visas because we are only um, allowed to offer specific advice on tier four, but we will help you generally with other visas. Um, and also if you need a visa for another country, we'll offer, offer you advice on where to go for, for, for further information on that. Um, we also have a global opportunities team. So the global opportunities team offer um, opportunities for students to travel to other countries, to study, work, volunteer. And there's lots of amazing opportunities there and it's all on our web pages. But if you want more information on that, get in touch and we can put you in touch with the global opportunities team. We also have um, 12 international student ambassadors on, as part of the team. Um, they are students like yourselves who um, have been trained and understand things about the university um, and are here to help us help you. Um, so we can't, um, there's a lot of students, so we can't cover everything all the time. And the ambassadors are um, an extended part of our team really, and they are on campus in the red hoodies. You can see them in the red hoodies around um, campus. They're there to help and advise. Um, so go and have a chat, go and ask them. They might actually have advice that we wouldn't because we're not students ourselves, 
they might be better placed to answer some questions. OK, so um, they're there to help you and they'll help where they can. And if they can't, they'll always come back to us and ask us to get involved. OK. Are the university departments that you might be interested in um, looking up online and getting to know more about are um, the career service. So we have a career service to help students with both current work situations, but also your career moving forward so they can help with things like CV building, how to apply for jobs, um, the best places to look, what things you might be doing wrong, that kind of thing. The I zone, the I zone is very important. It's um, like a main reception for the university. So there's an I zone on both campuses um, and it's they're part of the main reception and you'll see a big sign saying I zone. And it's basically a first port of call for all students, not just international students. So anything you think might affect you just because you're a student, not necessarily because you're an international student, the iZone would normally help with that. OK, so anything like council tax letters, um, if you're just asking for directions, if you need to know bus timetables, if you need to um, understand where a room is, um, if you are looking to pay for a trip or something like that, a lot of that is done at the iZone. OK. Student services um, is um, there again for all students, not just international students, and they offer advice on well-being, disability, dyslexia, counselling um, for students who who feel they need counselling. Um, they offer advice on financial matters, so if you if you manage if, about managing your budget or if you're looking to apply for a scholarship, that kind of thing. Student services is the best place to go for that. Again, if you feel like you need any of those services. Um, we would advise you contact us first and so that we are aware of your situation and student will get student services involved to help you out for specialist matters. OK, um, they're there for everybody to use um, and they're a really good service um, at the university. We're very lucky to have them. Um, so there's also the library and the IT services. So each campus has a library. Um, every student is welcome to use it as they need. Um, we would advise that you go and have a look and um, see what what IT resources are there. There's lots of um, computers for everybody to use um, and the IT team is also based in the Sandaf campus next to the library upstairs. OK. Um, there's gyms on both campuses and there are other sports facilities, classes um, and groups to join. Um, all that information is online um, or you can go to the gyms themselves on campus and, and ask about what facilities are on offer. We also have an accommodation office um, and they help students who are looking for accommodation and they also advise on uh, accommodation matters. OK, so Nicola tomorrow will be going into accommodation in far more detail. So we won't we won't touch on that today, but um, just know that we do have a dedicated team to look into accommodation issues for students. OK, and also there are catering outlets um, for food on both campuses um, and there's both have got also got food outlets nearby as well. OK. Last but not least, the Students Union. Now, the Students Union is in charge of a lot of um, societies and social events for students. Um, so have a look at their web page, Cardiff Met SU. It's slightly separate from the university. It's a union, um, but in the UK, all universities have one. And they are there to help students and support students. If, for example, they feel they've been unfairly treated by the university, then you go to the Students Union to represent you. But they also have societies um, and groups that you can join. So it's really worth looking into them early, especially early in your university career so you can get involved in different societies and different groups at the university. OK, it makes your time at university a bit richer and not just about education. Right, so Hopefully some of you are already here and settled. Um, some of you will be on your way. Some of you will be arriving soon. Um, but I wanted to just go through a few cultural differences that um, you might come across whilst you're in the UK. There are a lot of students um, feel um, maybe shock them initially um, and that you might find a bit strange when you get here. OK, one big thing is timekeeping. In the UK, it's really important for British people to be on time. Um, I re realise I started this webinar late, so it's easy for me to say that. But um, if you are late to an appointment or a class, you may be turned away. If you're late to a, web, um, a seminar or a lecture, the, the, the lecturer may not let you into the class, OK? It isn't considered appropriate to just come in whatever time you want. Um, the same for an appointment. If you've got an appointment at a doctor's, dentist, a legal appointment, any kind of appointment, it is important to be on time. Being polite is a big thing in the UK. Um, saying please and thank you is considered an important part of British culture. 
we say it a lot even when we don't even mean it um so if you don't want to come across as rude it's just important to say please and thank you every time we love queuing in the uk um we realize in some countries this is not the norm but in the uk if you're looking for any kind of service if you're doing any kind of activity there will be a queue to get into that service okay so you join the queue at the back and you don't try and jump the queue it is not acceptable in the uk in the uk men and women um, play equal roles in society there are no rules and regulations um, which prevent men or women doing specific jobs so you'll see men and women doing every kind of job every kind of level and they're all um, to be treated with respect no matter which service um, or level they are in okay it's always important to be polite and courteous um, no matter the the um, gender or the role of that person smoking is banned from all enclosed public spaces in the uk okay this has been the case for a while um, and we've got quite used to not having people smoke indoors this means that you can only smoke in designated areas where there is a smoking sign so if you look somewhere and you can see there's a designated smoking sign then you can smoke there um, on campus I believe we no longer allow smoking there used to be a small section on campus where smoking was allowed but I believe that that now this is not the case and that you would have to go off campus if you wanted to smoke okay so bear that in mind it won't be tolerated unfortunately if you smoke um, somewhere that is not a smoking area so a lot of students when they arrive um, suffer from culture shock it's very um, common it's very normal um, and some elements that contribute to this are things such as climate um, a lot of you will be used to a far warmer climate um, and the winters can be long in the UK and it can feel very grey and dull um, so just be aware that that is something that does does affect a lot of students obviously you'll be missing food um, British food is possibly not what you're used to it'll be very strange um, the language might seem difficult even if um, English is your first language it can be quite tiring um, listening to different um, ways of speaking and um, different terminology for things that we may use um, and you might find it uncomfortable to wear heavy winter clothes or um, some students are, are confused by the way we dressed here maybe maybe in the UK um, and also social roles and some some ways of behavior in the UK may surprise you okay so you might find relationships between men and women more or less formal than you're used to um, or you might find it strange um, you know the different the different habits or cultural habits that we have might seem strange and that can be tiring for for a person in a new country and it can and it can create um, a syndrome called, called culture shock um, that can also go hand in hand with homesickness where you feel like you um, are missing your home and you've moved away for the first time um, and you're missing your friends and family and missing missing out on, on what they're doing in their country okay it's very normal to have culture shock everybody has it for a while um, and it's something that you you will overcome okay ways to overcome it would be to contact um, keep in contact with your friends and family back home share your news information photos share what you're doing here okay um, have so many things around you photographs little personal things around you that, that have meaning for you that can really help make you feel calmer um, find a supplier of familiar food Cardiff has got lots of um, ways of getting hold of, of um, food that you would be familiar to um, familiar with whether that's restaurants or supermarkets um, and eat a healthy balanced diet okay if you're keeping your body healthy you're more likely to feel um, relaxed and energized and and not feel feel kind of um, down um, take a regular exercise especially if you feel like the grayness of the UK makes you feel low when it's a slightly sunny day or when, it, when it's a brighter day go outside and get those good feel good endorphins make friends with other international students okay so we've set up some teams groups we've got a Facebook group um, you'll meet them um, in your lectures hopefully now that things are back on campus um get in touch with each other and and you can support each other okay and and help each other out when you're feeling a bit low or if you're feeling um like you you're a bit confused about certain things um be prepared to find new activities so it's a really good time for you now you've just arrived in a new country it'd be a really good time for you to try some new activities and see what you know what new things you might be interested in doing you can join our societies or there's a lots of sports clubs lots of different clubs all over cardiff and south wales they would be worth taking a look at, seeing what you want, want and using this opportunity as, as a time to kind of get to know new people and a new activity, okay? 
investigate the Students' Union Society. So I've talked about the societies there. Lots of variety there for you to look into and join. And if your faith um, or your religion is, is very important to you, then there's always um, the option of joining a faith community in South Wales or in Cardiff um, that can put you in a familiar setting. If, this, if that's something you want to look into, let us know and we can let you know how to get in touch with um, groups for the particular faith that you're, you're interested in, in, um, in um, linking with. OK. Most importantly, remember that culture shock is normal and temporary. Uh, you'll overcome it and um, once you've overcome it, you will start to enjoy the fact that things are different and new and interesting in the UK. OK. Um, and it does the, 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 the just studying abroad in itself gives you a completely new perspective on the way of your own culture, on the world, on life. It's a really um, impressive, important thing that you're doing. Just just studying abroad is, is a big challenge and you've all you all taken that step. So hopefully eventually you will overcome that culture shock and you will enjoy the experience. OK. So one thing I spoke about there was food. Um, so our main supermarkets in the UK are Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's, Aldi and Lidl. Um, Aldi and Lidl tend to be cheaper than the other three um, and a lot of students prefer to use them. Um, you'll find them everywhere around the place. Have a look on Google where the nearest one is. There are big, huge supermarkets. There are little more convenient stores. The convenient stores, the smaller stores tend to be, uh, smaller versions of the supermarkets tend to be slightly more expensive. But you also got corner shops and your local shops as well. OK, so have a look on Google when you've settled into where, to your local area and see what's about. But um, they're the main supermarkets. There's also specialist food stores all across Cardiff. Um, I've written some down here <coughs> for various um, um, food from various countries, but there's more than that. There's there's loads all over the place. Um, and so the best thing for you to do once you are settled into a community, into an area, have a look on Google and see what's nearby in terms of um, food shops that, that speci um, specialise in the kind of food that you're looking for. OK. Um, and just a tip there at the bottom that we charge for plastic bags in car in Wales and the UK at the moment. So save money, save the environment. It's best to take your own shopping bags when you go to a shop. So I'm not going to talk too much about opening a bank account because that will be covered properly um, in the fees and banking webinar later in the week. But there's some names of banks down there at the bottom. Um, we can't recommend a bank. So we've already had some queries already about recommending a bank. We can't recommend a bank. You'll have to look into them individually online. They've all got different um, charges, overdraft facilities, payment facilities. Also have a look where your nearest bank is. So you don't want to be traveling halfway across the city to use the bank if you need it. OK. You will need. Different documentation for different banks. So if you look online and see what their criteria is then you'll know which documents you need to provide the bank that you've chosen. OK, so they could they could need a letter from us, a passport, entry clearance, a tenancy agreement or a BRP card. Um, you will probably have to wait for your BRP card to have arrived before you can open a bank account. OK, and you'll probably have to you'll also have to wait to enroll before we can give you a letter. So first of all, you need to make sure you've enrolled. You need to make sure you've had a, your BRP card, your student visa card which will normally be delivered to your home address or it will go to the post office, depending on which option you chose when you um, when you um, apply for it. And once you've had these, then you can open your bank account. OK, so but we'll go into it in further detail on on Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, you once you've chosen your bank, you'll need to email global letter at cardiffmet.ac.uk and we will put together a letter for you. We get hun hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of requests um, for bank letters, so there is a five day turnaround at the moment. You need to bear with us. We will get you the letter, but it isn't as simple as just clicking and sending it. OK, it's something we need to do lots of checks before we can send it to you. So um, as soon as you have enrolled and got your BRP card, your visa card and you know where your permanent address is in the UK, then after that we can get you your letter. Again, I'll talk about fees properly um, later in the week, but just wanted to, to note that it is important that you arrange your finances um, in advance and that you are aware when your deadlines are for payment. OK, all academic fees must be paid whilst you're studying at the university or else you would not be permitted to graduate, unfortunately. OK, so fees are not paid on time at the moment. What happens is 
there's a bit of a grace period and then you are blocked from your um, accounts. So you won't be able to access lectures, Moodle or your Cardiff Met email address. OK, so it's important to get those fees paid on time. If you're struggling, let us know and we'll have a chat to you about your financial situation. Unfortunately, we at the international office, we're not allowed to, to extend deadlines or change deadlines for fees. Fee deadlines are arranged in advance, unfortunately, OK? But what we can do is talk you through what will happen and maybe options such as deferring or suspending your studies if you're struggling financially, OK? Um, we have a webinar on um, health later in the week again, um, but this is something I wanted to get in here because it's important to do as soon as possible. Register with a GP. Please register with a GP as soon as you can. Um, every year we have students who become ill and we say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear you're ill. Have you gone to see your GP? And they say, I haven't registered with a GP yet. I haven't registered with a doctor. And that causes problems because we, you can't just go to a doctor once you're ill. You have to have already registered. OK, so don't wait until you've become unwell. Um, we'll go through it in more detail later in the week, but that's the link there to find your nearest GP or doctor surgery. OK. Um, a&E accident and emergency in Heath Hospital is only for serious life threatening emergencies. The health system in every country is different. In the UK, you do not go to hospital unless it's an emergency or unless you have a prearranged appointment through through your GP, through your doctor. OK, um, so those are the two things. If, if you unless you've got a real emergency, you need to go and see your doctor and to do so, you need to have um, registered in advance. Are you eligible to register with a doctor? Any full time student from a country on a course for more than six months or their husband and wife. Um, are eligible, OK, so. Um, you should be eligible, you should have already paid your um, NHS health surcharge when you um, got your visa. Um, so the, the most important thing to do, one of the first things you should do really now you're in the UK is to register with the GP following that link. OK, but we'll talk further about that later in the week. If you are unwell, it is important to let the university know. This is because we uh, as a university take these things into consideration when we're looking into whether you can get an extension, for example, for a piece of work or also at the international office, uh, the welfare team, we just like to know that you're OK and you know, sometimes there's things we might be able to do to help. So do email us and do email your course, um, your um, tutors just to say if you're going to miss class because you're unwell, especially if you're in hospital or are struggling with an illness. OK, that can be a physical or mental illness. Let us know we're here to help. If you're going to miss more than four weeks of study and you think your illness may affect your studies, you need a medical certificate from your doctor. OK, and as well, if you become pregnant or are pregnant at the moment, do let us know um, because we just like to make sure that you're OK and that we keep in touch with you to see how things are going throughout your course as your pregnancy um, develops. OK. Um, if there's an emergency now, an emergency. Oh, sorry, I've gone too far. An emergency um, such as severe chest pain, breathing difficulties, bleeding, a stroke, heart attack, then the number in the UK to call is 999 for an ambulance. Um, they will ask you on the phone whether you want police, ambulance or fire brigade. So, you, um, so any kind of emergency, whether it's a medical, whether it's um, that you need the police urgently or a fire brigade urgently, 999 is the number to call. OK, in the UK. A non-emergency telephone number is 101. If you phone 101, this is to report things to the police that is not an emergency, such as antisocial behaviour, loud noises, late night parties, harassment and other non emergency problems. So if you think you need the police urgently, 999. If you need the fire brigade or ambulance, then it's 999. But 101 would be for something that is not an emergency. So safety in Cardiff. Um, very luckily, Cardiff is one of the safest places to study in the UK. It's a lovely city. It's quite a small city um, eh, compared to a lot of British um, uh, university towns. Um, and it's actually very safe here, OK? Um, but it is a city nonetheless, and there are there is crime like every city. And some tips um, that we always think students um, should follow are um, not to carry large amounts of cash. It isn't usual in the UK to carry lots of cash with us. A lot of things are contactless now. 
Um, and if you are seen to be carrying cash, it would make you a target, unfortunately, in, in the UK. Never lend large amounts of money to other people or students. Every year students end up lending money to fr friends or students they've just met or they get convinced to lend money to people. And we often get emails saying nobody's paid me back or they've disappeared. Don't la lend large amounts of money. If another student comes to you saying they need money, tell them to get in touch with the university and we'll discuss their financial situation with them. But you should not lend them money. If you're taking a taxi, always insist the driver uses a meter. OK, the meter is at the front and you can see the, the amount you need to pay um, and try and use one of the taxi um, services in Cardiff. They're black and white taxis. They're the, they're the um, registered taxi drivers. If you um, purchase a bike, buy a good quality bike lock. Bikes get stolen a lot, um, especially for student areas. OK, so buy a good quality bike lock and make sure it's locked. Students studying in the Sandoff campus so there's a Taft Trail. Once you get to know Cardiff, you'll get to know the Taft Trail. It's a beautiful walk all the way from the city up to Sandoff campus and beyond. You can go very far on the Taft Trail. It's beautiful in the day. It's very popular for people walking around in the daytime. In the night, it isn't um, advised to walk there. It's dark and um, it it's, can be quite quite dangerous and rough. OK, we've, we've had students in the past get into trouble walking at night in the Taft Trail. So we would advise you to not walk on the Taft Trail, even though it's quicker when you're walking back and forth when it's dark. At your accommodation, keep your doors and windows securely locked. Purchase contents insurance to cover your loss of your valuables. Everything in your um, in your accommodation is your responsibility to insure. OK, so if you go online and find student contents insurance, it's not much to pay, but if the peace of mind to know that if something is, is um, stolen or broken and then your insurance will cover it. OK. Um, also, the, the tip here for registering your belongings with immobilize.com. Um, that will help the police reg return any stolen items to the rightful owner. If you, if you register things on that website, if they are stolen and the police does find them, they'll know who to bring it back to. OK, so that's just a tip for, for students. Unfortunately, um, the day and age we live in, there are a lot of scams via telephone or email at the moment. Um, we do have an increase in, in scams towards international students. OK. Um, some criminals, unfortunately, target specifically target international students, telephoning them to pretend to be from an organisation. OK, often they pretend that they're from something such as the UKVI and they demand money. Um, so students are telephoned by a number uh, and they say they need to pay a fine or an error or an email or text message received to confirm there's a problem with your card. And then it says, please click this link. Um, and then they've got your card information. If you get anything like this, anything that looks like they're saying it's urgent that you do this right now, right now, right now, take a second, stand back, think about it. Um, it's probably a scam, OK? Banks don't, don't send you text messages with links to, to click on. Um, the UKVI will never phone you up asking you to pay, pay straight away over the phone. Um, they will always do things via email and over their website and you should have time to get in touch with us before you pay anything. So if somebody is saying to you, you need to pay something right now, right now, put the phone down, don't answer, don't click on the link and get in touch with us and we let you know if, if it's a scam or not, OK? Um, Chinese students um, also get, get targeted uh, by fraudsters on using WeChat, so just be aware of that as well, OK? Um, some students get asked to receive money into their bank account to transfer it to another bank account while being offered some money. Say no, that is money laundering and you will become a criminal yourself if you do this. OK, it is not acceptable. It is something that is that will be chased um, in the UK if you are money laundering on behalf of somebody else. So if you're moving money on behalf of somebody else. OK. So religion. Um, Cardiff Met's got uh, prayer facilities on both Sandaf and King Coyd campus. So there's a chapel at King Coyd based in C Block and there's space for meditation and worship. The space um, has flexible use, so it's available for all religions to use um, and is available 24 hours a day. And there's a prayer suite on Sandaf, um, male and a female prayer rooms available on the f uh, ground floor in A Block. OK, we also have a Cardiff Met chaplain called Amira and she is um, there to offer spiritual guidance, uh, religious um, information, help, um, but also 
just a chat counseling um and some somebody to listen to to listen to your your concerns and your problems okay um if you want to get in touch with any kind of faith or group in in south wales amira has got links to all the faith that the faith leaders in the area and she would be happy to kind of put you in touch so that you feel like you you're in contact with your religion um or spiritual group okay Part-time work. So many students um, take up part-time work whilst they're here. Um, during COVID, there obviously were far fewer jobs, but things are sort of opening up now. So there, there are jobs hopefully available in Cardiff for students. So students at undergraduate or above are allowed to work 20 hours per week during turn time. It should say this on your visa, on your student card. Um, if you're below degree level, if you're a foundation, it's 10 hours a week. Um, all stu tier four students are available to work full time during official university holidays. OK, so when you um, have settled into your course, it's a good idea to email your um, programme administrators and ask for a term date letter. And on the term date letter, it'll just outline exactly when the term dates are, when your holidays times are. You can then use this when your employer asks you um, for your term time dates because they will know that you can only work 20 hours during term time and more during your um, holiday time. OK, if you're not sure, send us an email, but we can't produce those letters for you. It has to come from the school. Um, but the general rule is 20 hours during term time and then when it's vacation or holiday time, you can work more than 20 hours. Where can I find a part time job? So if you email a career service, they should be able to help you. Or if you look online onto websites such as indeed.co.uk or jobs.co.uk, what other ones are there? Um, oh, there's a lot. If you just look online at jobs in Cardiff, then a lot of kind of search engines will come up that you can look in to for, for various jobs. And also sometimes the Students' Union job shop has, has things on offer. So if you go to the Students' Union in Cardiff Met, you'll see the job shop there um, and they, um, they advertise jobs through there. You will need a national assurance number. I think I cover this in the next slide, yeah. You will need a national insurance number if you are planning on working in the UK. That's a legal requirement. Everybody, oh, sorry. Um, everyone who is employed in the UK is required to contribute to national insurance. You don't pay national insurance on earnings below 12,500, but you still need a national insurance number. Um, you will be able to do so by phoning this number here at the bottom, 0800 141 2075, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or now I believe you can also make the application online um, on that link there. I'm going to send you all this information, all these links via on, a, on an email later in the week. Um, and on that link there or on the phone number, you'll have to fill out, give some details, and then they will either just automatically send you the national insurance number or they will ask you to come in and provide some documents. OK, it's run by the government um, and it's a legal requirement before you before you um, you can start your work, but you need to get a national insurance number for your employer whilst you're working. So student ID cards in Cardiff Met are called Met cards. Um, you can't order this Met card until you've enrolled. You have to be enrolled on your course first uh, and you need to ensure your details, your address specifically is correct on the student system. Um, we will just go over that in the next slide, but You'll be sent a link by the university and we'll provide it in our email later in the week um, where you need to upload your details and a photo to get the MET card. Your card will be sent to the address that you've included on that application, which should also be the same address that's on the student system. OK, it can take a few weeks to get to you because if you think about all the students that they have to process those first few weeks um, and the email address is metcard at cardiffmet.ac.uk if you've got any queries, but you just need to be patient and you will get it as soon as possible. So it is a student's responsibility to ensure that the information on the student system is correct. Um, so when you move house or when you actually find your permanent address or if you get married or whatever, um, no, if you get married, let us know, but because um, you have to change change your, your title. But if you're changing address, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you would need to change yourself. No, it would just mainly be the address. Um, you go onto this link here. You select student profile and manage my details and you can upload and change the information from there. OK, um, it's important that that's correct because 
information oh and the, your email address just double check that your email address is correct on there as well because information from us will be going to you to those places and if you've forgotten to change the address we won't know they will still be sending information to your old address okay now registering with, with the police Students who hold a visa for six months or more from the following countries will need to register with the police. There's a list of countries there, I won't go through it. You will know if you need to register with the police because it will be confirmed on your entry clearance vignette and it will be stated on the email you've received from the UKVI. If you haven't been told you need to register with the police, it's because you don't need to. Not every country needs to register with the police, okay? If you've been told you need to register with the police, you can book an appointment on that link there um, and we will be sending that information out to students um, but it is your responsibility to make sure you've done so correctly okay um, we'll when we send the information out we'll we'll put on there all the um, documents that you will need to take with you um, but it is important that you do so um, quite soon after you settle in Cardiff it does say on the letter that it has to be done seven days uh, after arriving in the city unfortunately there are never enough appointments so as long as you've booked an appointment it doesn't matter if it's further than seven days away okay um, it's just it's just booking the appointment that's important. So uh, traveling to campus, um, we encourage students and staff and visitors to use um, sustainable travel, walking, cycling, public transport or car sharing. Um, start, students are not allowed to park on campus. Um, They're both easy to get to. They're both relatively close to the, to the town. Um, if you go onto the web pages for Sandath and Kinkoid on our website, they have far more detailed information there about traveling to campus. Um, remember that, that at the moment you still have to wear a mask on public transport in the UK um, and, and try not to sit closer than two meters to other passengers where possible. OK. We do have a service called the Met Rider, which is dedicated bus service that runs between campuses. It was shut down last year because of COVID, um, and I know they're running a, a reduced timetable at the moment. Um, I haven't got that timetable yet, so it's something that we will be sending out to students um, as soon as we've got confirmation of the exact details of the new timetable. OK, but but the Met Rider is is um, a good tool for students because it, it's specifically for both campuses. If you are planning on using the buses regularly, it might be a good idea to get a bus pass. They're called an IF card um, and you can go online and just look for Cardiff bus pass IF card um, and information can be found there. OK, if you're between 16 and 21, you can get a My Travel Pass um, before you travel, which will give you a discount to your travel um, prices. You'll see all around the campus um, next bikes, um, which are bikes you can rent for short periods of time. We've got some on campus. Um, and Cardiff Met students um, get the first 30 minutes free. If you go up and have a look at them, you've got to register on there or, or you can register uh, via an app or online. Um, and you, you can just use the bikes for as long as you need and it'll charge you after the first 30 minutes. OK, to get a taxi, there are several taxi ranks situated around the centre um, where you can pick up licensed taxis. The licensed taxis are black and white cars and they'll be waiting in the taxi ranks, OK? Private hire taxis will not stop on the side of the road. They can't be hailed at the side of the road. They need to be pre-booked. Um, private taxi numbers are 02920 for Premier, 333333 for Dragon, and 777 for Capital Cabs. Um, Uber is also available in Cardiff uh, via the Uber app. Um, and then we've also just got that information there on Travel Line Cymru, which is a useful website um, that combines train and bus travel. So if you put into Travel Line Cymru where you're going from and to, it'll give you the best route combining bus and train travel. OK, so as you know, Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. Um, although Welsh is not widely spoken in South Wales, it is widely spoken in other areas, such as where I'm from in West Wales. So I'm a Welsh speaker. Um, and we just wanted to teach you a few little words in Welsh um, for your time here. So thank you in Welsh is diolch. So it's diolch. Hello is shumai or sitmai. Wales, we pronounce Cymru. And welcome is croeso. And our word for a hug is kutch. Um, and another word you hear a lot in South Wales is the word lush. It's not Welsh, but we do use it a lot. It just means 
um, when something is, is fab or great or fantastic. OK, so don't forget we're here to help you. Um, these are our phone numbers and email addresses. Um, and we're also on Facebook and Instagram. We've already sent you that information by email. We'll put it in the next email as well. Um, please join our Facebook and Instagram accounts and Twitter um, uh, because we put some information on there um, straight away. You know, it, it's, a, it's a far quicker way of getting information to you than, than email sometimes. So um, that's it from me. Um, but I'm sure you've got some questions. I'm just having a look back here. Oh, there's 38 published questions. OK, I'll try my best to go through some of them. Um, and let's have a look now. Let me send myself back. Hold on a minute. Should be, there we go. Right, OK. Let me take a look. I'm just trying to. Oh, my computer isn't letting me look at the questions. Ah, right, OK. Are international students exempt from paying council tax? We'll talk about council tax uh, later in the week when we're covering fees. Um, but yes, students generally, international or home students, are exempt from paying council tax. We'll go through the process of how to um, sort that out when we're talking about fees and money matters and banking later in the week, okay? Can we get any rental bike services for coming to and from campus? So hopefully I've covered that. That's the next bikes. So yes, you can. You'll see them around the place, all over Cardiff and on campus. So there's, there's, um, you could get one in town, ride all the way to Cardiff, Met, and leave it there. I always used to say oh, I'm going to do that one day, but I, I haven't actually done it yet. But it is possible to to do the whole whole stretch on on bike. Somebody asking about whether they. Um, they can't attend um, some of the induction sessions later in the week. That's fine. They're all recorded and we'll be putting them on our YouTube channel and hopefully on Met Central as well. So once they're up, I'll send you an email um, hopefully on Friday and you'll be able to access them all there. OK, um, and if you're watching them and then you've got a question at the end, just send us an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, there's a few questions here that are quite specific, so if I haven't answered them, we'll try and um, get your student numbers and we'll email you back a response, OK? Um, so some of you have asked me about how your classes will be delivered or when your first class will be. They're course specific questions, so we can't answer them. They can that will have to be answered from the school. Um, the school should be sending you information if they haven't already on um, how to enroll um, with on your specific class. You should have had an email from the university that has a, a link on it to um, and the email we sent you last week actually has a link on it to undergraduate and postgraduate timetables. So if you look on there, that should give you an indication of when your first class is. If you're starting from online, from, uh, from abroad online, you need to get in touch with your school to ask them um, what the process is and where you need to register, OK? Uh, the attendance monitoring, somebody's asking when that will start. Uh, will induction week be counted? I don't know because the schools um, monitor and then they send us the information. Um, but I would advise you to definitely attend induction week if you can, um, because it just gives you so much more information about your course and it's really important to get all that information at the start. If you can't go to your induction week, you need to let the university know um, and they might be able to provide you stuff online. OK. What email address are emails sent? Emails are sent at the moment to your personal email address, the email address that you used when you uh, applied to Cardiff Met and the email address that you've had your um, offer letter sent to and all of that. Once you've enrolled, 
everything will be sent to your Cardiff Met email address. So keep checking your Cardiff Met email address throughout your time at the university. Everything from the university will be sent there. Um, is there a bus pass available for students to travel to and from the university? Um, I don't think there is a specific bus pass for students, but you can get a bus pass that is for general use. Um, so if you got, they're called if cards. Um, if you look online for Cardiff Met bus pass, sorry, Cardiff bus passes or if cards, they'll have all the different sections there. OK, um, there's a 16 to 25 one. There's a um, all these pensioners one. I don't know if it's specifically a student one. If you look on online, it should tell you there. Uh, some of you saying you've not had your enrolment IDs and passwords. If you please look in your junk mail, spam mail, you should have had an email by now about enrolment. If you haven't, send an email to enrolment at cardiffmet.ac.uk with your student name and number. OK, and explain that you haven't had an email yet. They do receive hundreds of emails a day, so they will get back to you, but you just need to be patient. Don't worry, the deadline isn't. Some of you think the deadline is today. It isn't today to enrol, um, but it is important that you do let us know that you haven't had your, your enrolment email. Can I get halal food on campus? That's a good question. I do believe that um, each day the the canteen on campus does do a halal meal. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'm quite sure. Um, if you go on um, campus um, and ask at the canteen, they'll be able to advise you. Um, but I'm sure I've seen in the past um, signs showing which which meals are halal. Uh, we've been asked, can you join classes online? Um, Yes, you can join classes online if you've been given permission for certain courses. Certain courses are not doing classes online this year. You have been advised of that by email. So we've, an email has gone out to say that all students need to be in Cardiff by the 27th of September. Um, some courses are still doing some classes online, but it's again course specific information. You need to contact your school and your course um, administrators to ask about specific information for your course. Okay, and a lot of questions about enrolment, um, adding modules and um, and pathways. Again, that's a course question, so it's it would have to go to the school. Um, we can't advise on academic pathways, um, but if you follow the instructions for the enrolment email, it should allow you to add pathways if you need to. When and where can I collect my BRP? So your BRP card, your student visa card. Um, you're on your letter from the UKVI, it should say whether you opted to get it sent to your post office or to the university. If you click the university, it won't come to the university. It'll go to your home address directly from the UKVI. Um, so the address that you have put on your application, it'll go there um, in the UK once you have confirmed to the university that that is correct. So on your letter, if it says post office, then it'll go to that post office. You need to make sure you've completed your isolation period before you go to the post office to get it. If it says it will come to the university, send us an email to say that you that that's what it says on your letter um, and that um, and, and we'll the immigration team will ask for certain information from you before they can OK to the UKVI to get your BRP sent to your home address. So you need to have an address in the UK first. Um, somebody asking if there's a good reason to open a British bank account and not just using your international card. Um, it's often cheaper. Um, so international cards often have fees attached to spending abroad. Some international cards don't let you spend abroad. Um, and if there's any problems, it's just easier to deal with um, here. Also, if you have a part time job, often they won't send the money to a 
to an international account, it'll have to be a British account. Um, so that's just some reasons. Some students never get a, a UK account and that's fine. But um, if you're thinking of having a job or if you are worried about fees and that kind of thing, it is, it is easier to get a, a British account. Uh, how can you access the links mentioned shown in the webinar? So as I said, this will be sent out to you um, to, sh to find again on YouTube and on Met Central at a later date. We'll also will be sending you an email later in the week um, with um, more you know, this information, but written down effectively. So you should have all the links in there as well. OK, it's also all on our website um, and uh, a lot of them are easily searched on Google anyway, but um, it is all available for you. We will send you an email at the end of the week with it all in one place and or at least links to our web pages where you can see where it all is. Um, if we can't open a bank account ASCP, we won't be able to pay our accommodation fees on time. Do you have a solution for this? Unfortunately, that is a problem we have um, every year. It's not something we can help. You have to be enrolled in order to get a bank letter because in the bank letter we have to confirm you're enrolled. The banks won't let you open an account unless you've enrolled. So there's nothing we can do um, to go around that. Unfortunately, it takes a while for students to get their bank accounts open. What we advise is that students um, pay from an international card if they can or um, however they pay their fees initially. That's maybe how you should pay your account, your accommodation costs. Um, students manage to do it fine every year. It just is a bit of a problem with opening accounts. It can it can be quite a slow process because the banks need confirmation from us that you're enrolled onto your course. Um, they also need your BRP card and it can take a while for the BRP card to get to you. So it, unfortunately it is just a bit of a slow process and there's nothing much we can do to, to make it faster. Can I edit the details I've given at the enrolment? It depends what details you want to edit. If it's an address or an email address, then yeah, you can follow the information I gave you earlier um, through through the card through Met Central. If it is something like uh, I don't know your name or marital status or something, then just send us an email and we'll have a look if we can edit that. That's something that'll have to go through the registry. Um, can we send you the PowerPoint file by email? Unfortunately, I can't send it to you by email, but we will have it on YouTube and Met Central for you to look at again, OK? Can we change our extra modules selected at enrolment? Again, because it's about modules and enrolment, that's something that has to go to the school. Once you've enrolled onto modules, it's quite difficult to change it. But um, if you contact your school about it, you should be able to um, to uh, maybe see if, if, if there's a way they can switch it. It's not something we are able to do for you, unfortunately. Um, if you ask, I keep mentioning contact in the school. A good way to know how to contact the school is to Google your course title and Cardiff Met, and it'll give you the web page for that course. If you scroll down to the bottom, it'll say contact us, and you'll have information there about who to contact in the school. So who your course administrator is, OK? Um, and that's normally the admin team that can help you with school queries. And um, so it's a question about um, if you're unable to attend lectures, how do you inform the tutor? Honestly, if you're unable to attend lectures, you'd have to have a good reason because you're being monitored. OK, so for your for your, for your visa, um, you have to attend all your lectures um, and there's a certain threshold. If you miss too many, then we have to report you to the UKVI. So my first advice would be unless it's really important, I would attend lectures. If you're unwell, um, or have a valid reason not to attend, you need to contact your school and your tutor. So you'll get to know your tutors and your school's email addresses as time goes on. Um, but again, if I, as I said, if you go to the contact us page of your um, school's web pages for your course, it, it, the information should be on there. Um, and you'll also be receiving emails from the school, so you, you'll have their email addresses. Um, but it is important to attend as many lectures as possible, OK? Not not miss them for, for unnecessary reasons. How do international students get a UK new telephone number? Um, so if you want a telephone number, a mobile number, 
you need to go to um, one of the many mobile phone shops in Cardiff town or in any town, um, or you can register for one online. Um, I can't advise which which um, telephone company to use. Everybody uses different ones. A part of it is what signal you've got best in your house or your area, um, or some of them have promotional deals. You might want to pay as you go. You might want a contract. The best thing to do is to go into a phone shop in Cardiff and um, speak to them about how, about what deals and information they've got, or look online all the different um, the different companies that there there are, um, and they will be able to advise you um, about about what kind of deal would be best for you, really. Um, but you can have pay as you go. You can have a contract. If you're thinking about a landline, I don't think it's worth. I wouldn't get a landline. Um, whilst you're in the UK, just because um, it costs quite a lot to get it set up and costs quite a lot to maintain, and I don't know if you would need a landline. Um, but if that's something you you, if that's what you mean, send us an email and we'll, we'll send you more information. But I don't I don't I wouldn't advise getting a landline. I would just get a mobile. Is credit score important to open a bank account in the UK? Um, not if you're opening just a general student uh, student account. Yes, if you wanted a credit card or um, a loan or something, then they would look at your uh, your um, credit score. But if you're just opening a bank account, it normally doesn't factor. I haven't got my visa yet. Is there any problem to start class? No, you don't need your visa to start the class. We know a lot of students are waiting for them um, to arrive. If you're in the UK, um, you can start your classes um, without your visa. Um, if you're abroad and you haven't had your visa to travel here, um, then yes, you need to make sure you let us know so that the school can give you permission to start online, okay? Because at the moment we are expecting students to be starting in person. What is the latest date of arrival for international students? Again, 27th of September is the date we've given that students should be here. Um, to get on with their courses in person. If you are struggling to meet that deadline, you need to let us know. We will then contact the school and let them know that you um, need to start online and whether that's possible. As I say, it's not possible for all courses. OK, so it's really important you let us know if you're not going to be here by then. Uh, I've got a question here about refunds if you don't get your visa. Um, it's very course, it's very specific information. I I would um I wouldn't want to give you the wrong information because it depends on various factors. So if you are in a situation where your visa is refused, um and you have enrolled or you haven't enrolled, just send us an email at that point and we will discuss that with you individually because it, it's not something that is um an easy answer um for everybody. It would be specific to various to various to how long you've been enrolled, why your visa was refused, that kind of thing. How do I request my Cardiff Met ID card? So that's in the slides. So when we send this out to everybody, you can have a look back, but that's the Met card ID. That's your Cardiff Met ID card. OK, so I cover that in the slides. And again, more questions about modules and pathways. That should be something you can add on enrollment, but we, we, um, the enrollment is done by a separate team. Um, but when, when you are enrolling, following the information that you sent by the enrollment team, you should be able to click on pathways and modules on, on there. OK, um, so I can't see any more queries. If I haven't answered your query, um, it's probably because it's very specific to you or it's to do with um, things that we'll be discussing later in the week. Um, or that they're very similar to other questions that I hope I've answered. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else that wants to ask a question, but we should be trying to finish up in the next five minutes. So I'll wait a couple of minutes in case there's anybody else that wants to ask anything. OK, well, anything that hasn't been um, answered that you. Um, oh, I can see some questions here about vaccines. Um, vaccines and COVID and that kind of thing will be covered in the healthcare section as well, um, the healthcare webinar later in the week. 
Um, but if it's specific to specific vaccines you've had, um, that's not something we can advise on. You, you need to check the government web pages on that. OK, but we'll talk about that later in the week in the healthcare webinars. Webinar. OK, so I think hopefully I've covered everything that you, you wanted to know about. Um, we have got so what day are we today? We are Monday. So later in the week, we've got Q&A sessions with the student ambassadors that you'll be able to ask and answer, they'll answer questions there um, to the best of their ability. Um, so if you think of any questions in the meantime, join that and you can ask stuff directly to them. Um, we are going to have an accommodation webinar tomorrow. And then there's also later in the week the banking and fees and finance webinar and there will be one on healthcare. I'm trying to think what we're doing. Healthcare and um, COVID um, registering with a GP, that kind of thing. So um, keep your questions for then if you've got any um, or you can send us an email um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Bear in mind we're very busy at the moment with a lot of queries coming in, so we do we will get back to you, but it might take a few days. Um, uh, and in the meantime, I hope you're settling in well. And um, those of you that have arrived, those of you that are traveling soon, um, I hope your travels are uh, safe and hassle free. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you, hopefully, and meeting some of you in person in the next couple of weeks. So we, once we get get back on campus and um, we can get to know you a bit a bit more. Um, but for now, take care and we shall speak to you again tomorrow. All right. Bye for now.